Can we start doing like, I know it's illegal, but can we start doing a Post Malone song in the intro? Post is sick. Big Post Dude, guy. Dude, Post uh, has a new song called, well, he's features on a new song called Dial Drunk. I forgot. The Noah Khan? Yeah, that's who it is. And my, I mean, some, a couple of my friends were just bumping to it and I was like, what's this new jazz? It sounded like jazz music Would for you sec. consider Noah Khan country? No. You see, I also don't consider him country. It's like folk, but every time I'm like, like he's he's like a kind of country. I like people are like it's not country. <laughs> like he's still yeah, like it's country. more of like a folk, like uh, oh, I almost say like folky rock, right? Like some type of like, because it's still kind of upbeat a little bit. Surprisingly upbeat. What's that from? Uh, the uh, we're the Millers. <clears throat> Mm, how to lose a guy in 10 days. You know what I was thinking? You have the creative mind, right? And I have everything else. <laughs> like, the looks, love the, the brains, looks, the brains, the sales ability, the sales ability, the, the funniness, looks, the funniness, really. The charm. The charm. The woo. The woo. Chat. The X factor, really. Uh, X factor. Hard to argue with what you're saying here. Welcome Most, to episode, what episode are we in? 40? 49 minus 16. Welcome to episode 49 of Undrafted Amateurs. Mm. We are got a new studio set up. Dude, if anyone's watching on YouTube. It actually looks weird to see you. Right looking now. good. Yes. Well, hey, you don't look good, but but it looks like weird. If I did. It would look weird. But like the new setup looks weird, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I'm on a movie set or something. You look like I'm you're getting on a movie emotional set. a little bit. You know what you look like right now? If Justin Bieber was on a movie set writing the score wow. to a thriller rom-com. There have been very few things in my life that would get me as fired up as that. And one was being born. I mean, that was definitely <laughs> up there, but after Let's that. Let's blow that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I had someone on a business call today. They saw my like picture in my signature. And they go, you look like a guy off Friends. Uh, is it Jesse, Joey? Joey. Joey. I never watched Friends Girl. You never watched Friends? I could see Joey. See a little resemblance. Maybe he, in the eyes. Is he hot? He he's the hot boy. Mm. Hot boy who gets all the girls. Well, I'm hot, but I'm just socially awkward. Mm. You gonna keep wearing the headphones speaking of socially awkward? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well. I live to make you uncomfortable. Does that make me uncomfortable? It, it sounds like But it you does. know what? Uh, uh, talking about that. Justin Bieber <laughs> and the movie draft. Now you're feeling uncomfortable. It's all you. Stop projecting on me. But speaking of Idris, and by speaking of, I mean thinking of, I wish that I could watch more of Hijack. That was so good. It was good. I wish I could have seen more when they landed the plane, right? Like what happened? I wish they would have hijacked another one. <laughs> like I, wish, I wish it was still going on. I wish we were 17 episodes. He's good point. though, isn't he? Very Especially good. with thrillers. I feel like he's very, Idris the British is very charm. good. Wow. But like also like, Sexually intelligent type of deal. Mm. Yeah. It's the accent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone falls, falls prey to that charm, the British charm. Yeah. Okay. Jumping in. Actually, no. Before we jump in, two random things I saw. One, you're never going to believe this. James Harden is going on another rant. I saw that. You see the video of him slamming Daryl Morey. What did he say exactly? That he, uh, he goes, he's a liar and I will never Respect. be a part of an organization with him again or something like that yeah nice what do you think about that what's new? who cares what's yeah. new james harden being james harden i feel like there's like a, a backstory behind it somewhere that probably was promised know. something yeah which every owner let's be honest every exec probably in sports does yeah. they're, probably, they're all liars you're they, a liar they all over promise you're and, a liar and guess what under deliver mm. yeah the worst dilemma then Dave Portnoy bought back Barstool for one dollar, I believe. Doll hair. I think it was one doll hair. Was the same yeah, I was price. reading about more how he did it. Um, he didn't buy back the gambling though. Right. So Penn, apparently Penn and ESPN. Yeah. So they're partnering uh, in the book, like the Barstool sports book, which I think was always Penn's. Yeah. It was just using the brand because they essentially acquired Barstool for marketing. Is going to turn into ESPN Bet in the fall. Wow. Yeah. Every one of their moms creating betting apps. Yeah, I mean. Should we do it? We just 
Mm-hmm. Welcome to Undrafted <laughs> Amateurs betting app. We know people, so obviously all of the regulation, regulatory stuff, it's going to be easy peasy. Taken care of type of deal. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Anything else? What are we missing? What's going on in our lives before we jump into topics? Let's see. Uh, my life is extremely interesting. We are... Um, all right. What all happened right. on this day in history? <laughs> Did you have anything interesting going on? I'm sorry. I didn't ask. You didn't care. I, I mean, that's probably true. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I have become fascinated with Bobby Altoff. Say more. So have you seen her new podcast? No. Oh, it's taken over the internet by storm. I'm shocked as a podcast guy. Mm-hmm. You've never seen it. So what happened was she was a big TikTok creator. Yeah. She had like 3 million followers. She's a young mom. And mm-hmm. she posts a lot of mom content. Mm-hmm. Like that was like her, her vibe, her demographic. And then out of nowhere, she goes, I want to start a podcast. Mm-hmm. Right? And for the moms. so No. Oh, for the not moms. Interviewing celebrities. Like a entertainment, you know, like one of those. Hmm. So she got um, Funny Marco on somehow, like her second podcast. Funny Marco, like somehow collabed with the video. Drake liked it. Uh, Bobby Altoff, she was like, hey, I just keep shooting my shots. Like, hey, do you know any celebrities, this and that? She reached out to Drake, like, when you come on the podcast? Drake came on the podcast. She flew to Canada to be on the podcast, or for Drake to be on her podcast. You know what her podcast is called? It's complete satire. The really good podcast. The really good podcast. And she's like, apparently this like, um, really like, not, I don't know if socially awkward is the right word. What's but her name? I'm looking at her. Bobby Altoff, B-O-B-B-I. Okay. So she's apparently this kind of like, socially awkward, shy female. Right? Wait. But she, listen, listen, she plays a skit on her podcast. She plays like this, like, f- she plays like this female who like doesn't care about anything type of deal. And it's like very sarcastic and it's very like, I don't care. Like she asked Mark Cuban for her flight. She's asked every guest to pay for her flight home. <laughs> like, you know, just like asking questions. People like normal people want to ask like Mark Cuban, like, so how much do you pay your chef? Like, and like stuff like that. And just like asking a bunch of Is stuff. Is that the one I was just looking up like her picture. I saw a clip with Drake and I think it was her yeah. where they were talking about like giving him giving money to her daughter or, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she asked him. for money. It's like one of her like skits too. I think it's like mm-hmm. she asked for money. Like, Hey, can you, uh, and can you, you thought of this because she's acting socially awkward and you are socially awkward. Well, she normally is. But now she Uh, acts like she acts. So she originally apparently is very shy, very sweet, but she acts like standoffish on the podcast, (laughs) right? Like she's like, so what do you do again? And she's talking like Tyga. (laughs) So like Caleb Presley style almost? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Very similar. Except she's like very like, I don't know. It's people love it though. But anyway, I've kind of become fascinated with like, she blew up from like, Oh, she's on like her seventh episode now mm-hmm. and she has like i want to say 20 million youtube views alone that's crazy that's so she just to signed us. a huge brand deal with um wsr uh, i forgot the exact uh, network just say letters oh, that's what i did xerox xerox <laughs> so anyway oh that's it so anyway <laughs> <laughs> well on that note let's transition to topics so first up NFL is here. So going to run through some headlines, some things. One, found a landing spot for Dalvin Cook. I think think it's finalized. If not, it's close to it. But Dalvin Cook is now part of the New York, New Jersey Jets. You think he'll be the backup QB? Dude, I mean, we'll get into this in a minute, but (laughs) Zach Wilson wasn't looking terrible. Yeah. I think, honestly, Aaron Rodgers coming is probably the best thing to happen to Zach Wilson. Yeah, and now they have a loaded running back room now where – I heard people complaining that now the Jets have too many good running backs. Um, Ridiculous. So that okay. happened. Other running back move, Zeke is now part of the New England Patriots. That's going to be interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Well, are the Patriots going to slowly but surely build up their dynasty again? Max so Jones, the rumor next has it, you heard it on this podcast first, Tom Brady's going back to the New England Patriots starting August 17th. <laughs> Crazy how we time this I up. think you just want... 
Tom Brady to come back. You've said that so many times. You of said course was, I do. I wanted him to go to the 49ers. That's I was the one about I thought. To say, I know, I know. But. Uh, whatever. Anyway, anyway, he's going back to the Patriots. Patriots are always going to suck as long as they're under Bill Belichick. So Anthony Richard got named the Colts starter, which I read a little article that he was like, I didn't expect this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And it's like the classic proposal reaction. I had no idea. I just right. got a manicure. But yet, like, got a manicure. My nails are and looking then my fire. And then my uh, boyfriend threw up in the truck. And like, <laughs> <laughs> and I also purchased the ring. But I had no idea. What I gave an my honor. ring size last weekend. <laughs> and then sent a link. <laughs> and I said, if you don't buy this in the next but week. But shocker, <laughs> Anthony Richardson, he's the starting quarterback. I know. So I hope, look, man, I'm rooting... Deep down, I know I criticize some of these pe- more athletic people than I am. <laughs> you don't and have to act hum- humble. We know that. We know I, I really hope the best. Anthony Richardson, he could be an uh, outlier, could be an absolute monster. Bryce Young could be an absolute monster. And mm. um, whatever that freaking guy's name was, the other guy could be a, could be pretty good. CJ Stroud. That's what I mean. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, the Texans, though, the Texans will suck forever. I yeah, think. I think the Texans are going to suck. <laughs> yeah, he also forever. didn't look that good, let's be honest. Yeah. Of all of the three of those you named, C.J. Stroud, I think, looked the worst. We'll get into Bryce Young in a minute. But yeah. I'm excited about this one. DeMar Hamlin is back on the field yeah. for the that preseason. That's awesome. Which, yeah. That is honestly so nuts because that was a little over eight months ago. Mm-hmm. So all the conspiracies can go to rest. That really was him at the game unless they found a replacement. Remember all of those him. that were like. Yeah, they could have found him though. Well, like unless they were saying that he's he's gone and. They replaced them. Oh. But and then there's another one that was just a doppelganger in there. Josh um, Allen, though, came out and said, Nope, it was him. Came, <laughs> through, the, came through the locker room shocked. Thank goodness for Josh Allen. I know. It's crazy. All of these, I hate even calling them conspiracy theories. They're more of just yeah. like realities. Yeah, or using the name Josh Allen. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. But yeah, good for him. Seriously, Heartwarming. That's, awesome. that's honestly, I don't I don't want to make light of that because that's super but exciting. But you were. But it is no, no, awesome. no. You were the one making light of it. I was being genuine. No, I said it was heartwarming. Yes. We're on the same page here. Yeah. We're saying the same thing. All right. So there's still a lot of question marks, though. Can we talk about that? Mm. Let's talk about the question marks here. First up, Chris Jones. He, not related as to of, Mac. As of when we're recording right now, not related to Mac, uh, he is still holding out. So racking up some fines for the Chiefs. I've seen some rumors of... I saw a rumor of him even getting traded to the Packers. I don't know what's going to happen here. He's racking up fines. The Chiefs need to sign him. Their yes. defense is not the same without him. Correct. And they need to pay him what he's worth. Or not sign him. They just need to pay him what he's worth. Only so much Patty Mahomes can do. Let's face that. And we are going to figure out this year with the receiving class. Right. What's what's happening? I don't know. But when you have Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes, you can only be but so bad. It's like Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. Like, mm-hmm. you can only be but so bad. That's true. Worst case, you're going to be probably in the top 30. Yeah, worst least. case, you're what? 11 and 6? <laughs> like, is that <laughs> like probably worst case scenario? So, I don't oh, yeah, know what's I agree. They, they need them, especially on the defense, because the Eagles, I mean, they're going to run all over them regardless. Jalen but... Carter is putting people on there behind. Dude, that guy is a freak He's of a... nature. That was wild. I mean, first of all, obviously, he was an absolute monster at Georgia. And then, obviously, 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 if I say obviously again, I'm probably going to hurt somebody. Obviously. But obviously, he went to Georgia. University, where they've he actually had some changed off-field it. troubles. It is now Georgia College. G U instead of G U A, Gua, Georgia University Gua, of Tunga Athens. Gua <laughs> yeah. uh, All right. What about Jonathan Taylor? Uh, so on the pup list, physically unable to perform with his ankle, but still have no idea because he's asked out of uh, Indianapolis probably because they have a much better running back in Anthony Richardson uh, or right. because of issues with management, Ursa. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, Ursa management, same thing. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen there. I really, I feel like whether I'm right or wrong, generally wrong, I can make up an opinion that I believe. I don't have one on him. Like what I think is going to happen. Like part of me thinks okay. that he's going to be gone. But. I think here's a deeper question. Yeah. What's the what, meaning of life? What do we think about the running running back position in the NFL? I think that's the question. Because obviously there's a few running backs that held out. 
I think er pretty much all of them are, I guess, quote unquote, fixed or a new deal has came to a agreement or came to an agreement except Jonathan Taylor. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. There was a few running backs holding out. I don't think teams want to pay these running backs big money because what is the point? I mean, as far as like the differential between a mid tier and a top tier running back, like there's a big difference between a really good left guard and an average left guard. And there's a really big difference between a good, like a mid tier quarterback and Pat Mahomes. Yeah. But is there a big difference between say like, um, a mid tier running back and a top tier running back to me, there is when it comes like a Derrick Henry or like an Austin Eckler, Christian McCaffrey, I'd put Jonathan Taylor up there too. That's such a good dual threat. Okay. You know so what I mean? Like, like wide receiver in the back too. Yeah. Like yeah. Christian McCaffrey is a very good receiver and great between the tackles. So, I mean, I still feel like there is a gap but between the top five. The 49ers still lost to the Eagles without a quarterback. And the Eagles didn't have anyone like McCaffrey in the running back spot. They also had a quarterback. And that's what I'm talking about. We're talking No, I'm just mean they, they literally had someone who was a quarterback <laughs> know, on the depth chart. Know, that's fair. Don't but even get me started with that. They were 128-7 regardless. I still okay, that. that's just ridiculous. Stop kicking me. <laughs> Stop kicking me. With to your point though, I just don't know what's going to happen because from with all the analytics and everything, why is a team going to overpay for a running back that they look at their shelf life? They're like, what's the point of a second shelf contract life, with yeah. it? But then from a running back side, they're like, yeah, look at our shelf life. We're getting abused to play this position. Yeah. And you know yeah. what I mean? So then why would you want to? And it's interesting because I would say the way that I grew up and a lot of the people in the league, it's like running back was the peak position to play. Like It's always drafted number one and number two in fantasy. And, well, and it's just like, it's exciting. It's like, that's where you wanted all the athletes. That's the people that you grew up watching. They were just, you know, like fun to watch. And that's what you wanted to play. Yeah. And now in six, 10 years, you're going to get probably even starting soon. But like, at least in six years, the people coming in the league are like, why wouldn't I want to be a receiver? I make like way more money or. Well, also I think a big difference is, you know, compared to a decade ago, mm -hmm. there's more pass attempts than ever, right? Like teams are passing the football. There's a lot of West Coast offense where there's a lot of seven yard routes, yeah, five yard slant routes, right? There's a lot of like high percentage passes now because they're like, let's just get six yards downs. on a pass, yeah, right. So I think especially teams that are going to be pass heavy, like it, it's tough to invest all that money in a running back. Yeah, you got to think about the best. I mean, obviously Burrow has Mixon. Mixon's a solid running back. Hertz doesn't have. I mean. Who's, the, who's even the freaking Eagle? Is Because Sanders is not there, is he? Uh, No, Sanders went to Carolina. That's but what I'm saying. Who did they... They got someone else. Was it... Um, I think... What, no, they got... I think Nathan Swift. Not Nathan Swift. Oh, DeAndre Swift. Uh, yes, DeAndre they Swift. did. Nathan Swift someone I grew up with. <laughs> <laughs> Shout uh, out, N-Dog. And, uh, and he's wearing number zero. Because they can wear well, that, zero now. So that's... Yes, I knew... Thank you. So DeAndre Swift went over, and DeAndre Swift's a pretty solid running back. He's not, don't get me wrong, I would definitely say he's like upper mid-tier, mm -hmm. I think, running back. But these t these teams with like a Hurts, you know, and some could argue even like uh, Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson, depending on how they play, Joe Burrow, Pat Mahomes, like they don't need to spend a lot of money on a running back. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, I get it from, that's it's just one of those things, I get it from both sides, and it frustrates yeah. me because... I don't really know. Except what Aaron Rodgers. He needs that. That's why Davin Cook went to the Jets. Mm. That's true. True, true. Speaking of, though, Kansas City, what do you think about Purdy? Speaking of Kansas City, Shanahan has named, well, so Purdy's been named the sh uh, starter. I was about to say the starter. <laughs> and Purdy and Shanahan said that Purdy would have to melt in practice to lose QB1 position. And let me tell you what, having been a Panthers fan, watching Sam Darnold, seeing what he's done so far as a 49er, and then watching. Um, Trey Lance, I agree. Like, yeah. I think Christian McCaffrey is QB two at this point. Hundred percent. Which, this is going to be a perfect transition to buying the hype for this week, since it's NFL preseason. Instead of talking about it like it's a real game, it's all right. hype. So and let's just make BS. this entire thing buying yeah. the hype and continuing right on. Brock Purdy hype buying it all day, buying long. it 
all day long. The guy's since a winner, man. Season. The guy's a winner. Dude, come on. I'm not even going to argue because you've come to the light. No, the guy's a winner. Now, do I think, like, obviously Garoppolo at the time was was a pretty solid quarterback, and Trey Lance, no one really saw what he could do. Uh, he was a very high, I mean, he was a first-round draft pick, so, and no one really saw what he could do. But anytime someone comes into a locker room and wins those types of games, like Purdy mm-hmm. won, I think, once again, someone has to melt in a puddle. Or Purdy has to melt in a puddle before, you know. Or had the same injury, I guess, that I, happened last year. I hope year. not. Come on, knock yeah. on wood somewhere. But I'm buying the hype. I agree with this. Also, I'm thinking about, um, you are just saying, with Trey Lance. And so this is an interesting thing that I heard about. He, I guess in high school, didn't play an 11-man like football team. It was seven. And then his last year in college was the 2020 season, I guess. And so they only played one game for him there. So with the, he has like very limited seven on seven reps in football, 11, like in 11. game. Sorry, yeah, 11 on 11. Wait, his high school seven seven? I, that's, I heard that somewhere. And I, I think that's a thing now. Dude, I think the private school near South Hill, because they had so little kids, I think in high school they did. If it wasn't seven on seven, it was very close. Huh. I don't think it was full 11. It wasn't 11. It's interesting thing about, but so one, he just, yeah, he has insane talent, but he hasn't had the same reps. And then where is he going to get them now? Also with Kyle Shanahan, this is what I said at the end of last year. And I still stand by it. It's just like, he's not a great fit for Kyle Shanahan's office. Like if you looked at, again, this preseason means nothing, but he's just so slow getting the ball out. He like does too many reads for it. It's such a fast pace, like check down offense. And so. I just think that Brock Purdy's talent wise, maybe not the same as him, but a much better fit. Yeah. I agree. I'm and buying so, the hype. I'm buying the hype. But what was that song? It was like Wildcat Offense, check the paw prints. We in the building. And people All right, are, next up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And people are in apartments. <laughs> uh the New York Jets, I'm not buying the hype. What are we defining the hype as? Like what's Oh, I think since he got Aaron Rodgers, the hype is like a hundred percent winning the division. Okay. Right? And I think it's at least making it to an, a divisional playoff game. I do not think they're winning a division. I don't either. I'll get into that in a minute. I do think they're going to be a playoff team. I think they're going to be a wild card team. That's what I'm going to go I think by. I agree. Wild card they're team. They're going to go 10 and 7. I was going to go 12 and 5, I think. Somehow a 39-year-old. Oh, no, 11 and 6. Somehow a 39-year-old Aaron Rodgers is just going to make it happen. So here's what I don't know, though. He looks happy there. He, he looks does. excited. He looks like he's enjoying playing football. Which means he's going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's what it means. In the Panthers-Jets preseason game, their defensive line, which we knew was nasty, looked nasty. nasty. Jets have been slowly but surely building pieces for the last 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ever since Mark Sanchez's butt fumble, they've been really taken off. Uh so Dalvin Cook's going to help. Oh, And yeah. then even watching Zach Wilson play with like Aaron Rodgers coaching him and stuff. Okay, I'm, I'm not about to say that he looks good, but he looks a lot less horrible than he did last year. Well, so I don't know. I just think Aaron Rodgers is making the people around him better. It also takes a very special person. Like once, I would argue, once every three to five years. Yeah to really transform an organization like Joe Burrow transformed the Bengals. Like it takes a quarterback like that being drafted top five overall, or at least first round typically, and then transforming an organization. But that only happens. Like think about all the quarterbacks that are drafted in the first round every year. And like, first of all, that's, and it makes it infinitely tougher when you're drafted top three overall and you go to the New York jets with no pieces around you Arguably one of the worst coaching staffs in the league at the time. And like when Zach Wilson was drafted. Yeah. Not a great coaching staff, but he had pieces around him on the offense. Had some receivers some running backs. White played better than him when he came in. as like, yeah, but I just think there's, there's so much pressure. No, no, no. I'm, I, I completely with you. Like his ceiling is higher than what was shown in yes. the first couple of years. And you get someone like Aaron Rodgers and, and you essentially take the weight off of um, Zach Wilson's shoulders that he's like not expected to play for a couple of years. I think that's the only way that he has a legitimate chance of a good NFL career. hundred percent. 
But here's the, the piece that I don't know is the Jets defense is so good. I don't know. Like, I know that right now defenses so, don't win championships in 2023. Yeah, I mean, they definitely help. But <laughs> they help, but they, they, like, I, I am eating words that I've said in the past. Like, Eagles last year, prime example. 49ers. Prime example. Too. So, he, okay, so here's my thing. Yeah. That's why I think they, I don't even know if they're going to make it to the divisional. I mean, you have so many good teams in the AFC. And in Dude, their division. You have the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. Dogs. Yep. The Cincinnati Bengals. Yep. Dogs. The Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. Dogs. I mean, like, it's going to be tough. Down with you. But once again. All right. We're agreeing so far. All right. Third up, Bryce Young. So it depends on where you define the hype for me. Right. Yeah. We should if it's it. the hype of a first round, like a first pick. Let's just talk. How do you think the season's going to go? I think. They're gonna go six and eleven. Or sorry, even just for him as a quarterback. Like, is he gonna look sharp? Is he gonna look like? I think he's gonna have a very rough time. Here's what makes. No, talking very, about the hype of the a very game. rough time compared to like a first overall draft pick. Well, now, so he was hit like three of his first five throws. This is what's making me nervous. The supposedly rebuilt Panthers offensive line looks terrible. Yeah, they're, you're they're about not, to say something though. They're not gonna have a great. I mean, doesn't look like they're gonna have a great offensive line this year. But you never know. Maybe they, they'll have some team chemistry. Maybe, we'll, <laughs> Maybe they'll that, have enough dinners together that they'll be like, "Hey, when I flex my left shoulder, you you chop block." That's right. Yeah. Anyways, or or maybe Bryce Young will buy them all PS fives. That'd be like nice. lineman gifts yeah, and yeah. stuff. Maybe in like a Pac Man uh, machine, something like that. I think he's gonna do okay. I think he's gonna show moments of brilliance. I really mm -hmm. do. But I think for the most part, he's going to really struggle just because, like, I like the Panthers coaching staff right now. I like Reich a lot. Um, and I like their overall kind of offensive scheme. Tepper still sucks, though. Tepper still sucks, right? <laughs> but I also don't love who he has around him. I mean, they seem to be kind of like an old veteran. Like, dude, if only we still had DJ Moore. Yeah, I mean, dude, obviously, honestly, they, if if he had a stud wide receiver, DJ Moore is looking nice right now. If he right had now. like a Justin Jefferson, I would I would argue that. But anyway, but, I just think he's going to show moments of brilliance. But overall, for the most part, he's going to have a disappointing rookie year. So here's the one point I would add: is he looked so good in spite of having so little time in the sense of like he was knocked down a bunch. He looked physically fine with it. He was cool under pressure. He had good touch still like all in all with what he was handed. I thought he handled it exceptionally for this first game. He was four of six for 30 yards, but I'm just saying like he yeah, was just, given yeah. like just knocked down, had good touch. hundred percent was yeah. cool under pressure. Didn't make a rash decision and throw it up. You know what I mean? Like it could have been a lot worse. Maybe exceptional was strong, but not terrible. <laughs> I All agree. Right. I agree with the not terrible. I agree with that. <laughs> Next up, the so Baltimore you buy the Ravens. hype or what? What are you doing? You didn't answer. Let's add a pass in here. No, dude. Uh, well, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna buy the hype in the sense that it's gonna be an upgrade for the Panthers. Having Bryce Young will be an upgrade from what we had in the past. So from Sam Darnold, it's gonna be an upgrade. And from Baker Mayfield. Dude, gosh, how badly I wish that happened. And he was good. Uh, I know. All I right, you meant so I guess up. you're buying the hype of him being the number one overall pick and lead him to the playoffs. Yep, and so the, the Super Bowl. <laughs> Heard it here Baltimore first. The Baltimore Ravens. Buying the hype. I'm buying it. I'm, I'll go first in this one. Okay. Lamar Jackson seems fired up. Yep. He's going to stay healthy this year. That's my my words. Odell Beckham coming in. Zay Flowers. Definitely helps. Weapons. Yeah. yeah I weapons. understand that, that Odell didn't play last year. That and that he got kicked off a plane, but he's going to be looking good because he is good. And then Zay Flowers is nice. And then he's still got Mark Andrews. The passing game, because I saw uh, somewhere that uh, Lamar Jackson was saying that he's getting to do things that he's been wanting to do in oh. the past and hasn't. So I think we're going to see the, uh, the passing game opened up a little bit. And then he's still just going to be shredding defenses because he's nasty like that running the ball. He is nasty running the ball. So Another team to watch for the AFC. I agree. I'm going to... I'm going to put him in the top seven teams this year. I would agree with that statement. What, seven teams in the AFC? No, in the league. Either one. No way. 
Not league. I do think, though, they're top six in the AFC. That's not that hot of a take. Yeah, but it's buying the hype, though. I mean, okay. I, I think they're going to, you know, we might see a Ravens Jets divisional game. Uh huh. That'd be kind of nice. That'd be crazy. And then last one. Uh, I'm not even, well, I guess this kind of ties into the next one, but I was going to say the Chiefs. Like the hype for them has now become Super Bowl. So are they going to repeat and become the first team to go back to back Super Bowl since the Patriots did it in 03 and 04? I'm going no. Every part of me wants to say no. And I'm going to say no, but Patrick Mahomes is that dude. He, <laughs> like, I mean, it's hard to argue. Dude, he can't argue he, with that. Especially after watching that, uh, the quarterback documentary in Netflix, yeah. on Netflix, I was like, dude, the confidence this guy has and just the overall goal he plays with. I yeah I know I I'm with you and it's and Andy Reid's a genius it's, like it's you can't really too. bet against Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid but I will say you've got Travis Kelsey uh-huh. obviously he's gonna be wide receiver number one Beast. as a tight end yep uh they don't have a lot of other weapons they on don't. offense yeah you're right and if they don't get Chris Jones back defense might be lacking a little bit who knows but that's the transition to what's our early Super Bowl predictions. Mm. You want to go first? You want me to go first? So, we're so doing matchup? Like who the, yeah, what's the matchup like and then who's winning? You know from the NFC, we're picking the Eagles. Mm-hmm. I mean, you already know. They steamrolled. Big Eagles guy over there. They kept Hurts. They kept a lot of their weapons. They added, um, get, not Garrett. They added um, Carter. Yep. And so, I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. But I think uh, the Eagles, and this is why... I said it's tough to bet against Mahomes yep. as far as buying the hype. But if there's one man I choose and I bet on to beat the hype, you know who it is. It's Joe Burrow. I think mm. it's the Bengals Eagles Super Bowl. Joe Burr. As long as Burrow says healthy. It, so it's funny because I think we're going to repeat our pre playoff ones because I like the Bills 49ers for this. I think Von Miller. Okay. It's gonna Von Miller, Josh is he, Allen. How old, is he forty five? How old's Von? He's Miller like thirty three. <laughs> thirty three. He's gonna help bring bring that ring to Buffalo. I think it's gonna happen. I actually no. Let me let me take that back. I don't know if it's gonna happen. I think we're gonna be playing in a Super Bowl. The reason I think it might not happen is because of my new found. So you really San think though? So I, here's my my take. Brock Purdy is good enough. To lead a team to the playoffs. To the playoffs or in the playoffs? To the playoffs and yes. maybe win a couple playoff games. Yes. You think Brock Purdy can win a Super Bowl? That's a bold statement. Yeah, I think he can. I think he would have done it last year if he didn't get hurt. Wow. I, I legitimately think that he, they would have won if, if he hadn't gotten hurt. The, the biggest question I have is what did the San Francisco 49ers defense look like without D'Amico Ryan? That's what I... If if every piece was the same, in the sense of like he was still there coming from last year, I would have them as the Super Bowl faves. So right now, I'm like, I want to see a little bit, but I, I, I'm i pairing them up with the Bills. You gotta pick I, I think I'm going to go Bills right now. Yeah. As of right now, I think I'm going to go Bills. I'm tomorrow. going Joe Burrow. It's his time, baby. Mm. It's his time to shine. Right here. Right now. And right now. Mm. Yeah, so the, let's see, the Bengals are at plus, or no, current odds plus 1,100, and the Bills are at plus 900. So not crazy to be either one. The Chiefs are at plus 600 because, again, we got to put our money with Thrive. Against them. To be determined. <laughs> All right, baseball. We'll keep this somewhat fast because everyone thinks we're baseball nerds. Which we are. You are a baseball nerd. You're I do enjoy the sport, but you are a baseball nerd. Why? Because I watch like every game. So <laughs> yeah, yes, you watch every Braves game. Which let's kick it off with the Braves. All right, let's go. Take Dude, it away. First off, Olson passed Otani. Wow. So he's at forty three home runs. Otani's at forty one. So of August fifteenth. As of August fifteenth, he's in the lead for the home runs, and the Braves are still on pace to for the set, to set the single season record for all time home runs to beat the 2019. Dude, Olsen points. keeps hitting these bombs. He might have 60. Dude, I mean 
we we just need Darno to get ten, who's our like tenth player. Then we'll have ten <laughs> players that have at least ten home runs. That's insane. Like I dude. mean, they're on track for last I did the math like 313 314 the math every day at oh, like yeah. 330 Always crunching numbers Joe is doing the math on the Braves you gotta figure out what they're projected at right uh, after they finish the game every day you're like okay if they do this, if they do this. you're not wrong <laughs> so that happened uh, Dodgers are hot right now any comment sorry I think I just choked almost Ask me if I care. No, uh, the I'm Dodgers are hot. They've won eight straight now as of August 15th. So why do you why do you think they're so hot? You think it's Mookie? They're uh they're just playing well. They're they're hitting some dingers. They're in second place. Only like 40 home How's runs Freddie behind Freeman the Braves. Doing? Uh he's now, I think, second. In batting average, I think he's hitting a little over 340. That guy is just a monster yeah. batting average. Home runs are down a little bit, but batting average is just nuts. Defense looks pretty good, I think, for him. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, they just look good. So That's that'll be interesting say. to see. Really? I mean, they yep. look hot, but... You know what's not good, though? Wander Franco. Hmm. What the... I, I, what uh, what uh, Iceman texted us, I cracked up laughing oh yeah you want to share uh, well, I, well share the news first for anyone who hasn't heard wander franco was placed on the restricted list by the rays um because there's like a social media post i guess that went around that was um saying that he allegedly had a relationship with a minor which i'm pretty sure is like a 14 year old right do like, we know though that's true i guess we don't know like i I'd never saw the picture i but but rumors. Was it him though? You never know. Never know. So uh, I think Dominican it's like people, authorities it's like, are doing like are investigating it right now. It's like people like who say I look like Joey from Friends, right? It's like he might be in a picture. Joey might, and then they might think you know someone might think it's me, you know, and stuff like that. Well, I mean, so. obviously, hope it's not true. Oh, I hope it's not That's true as well. Yeah, yeah. Horrible, but. I guess we'll find out. Right now, it's just an alleged relationship. So yeah, but Iceman said uh, over or under how many proms he goes to this year. <laughs> but it, it's not prom season anymore. It would be next year. That's yeah. So Iceman, that? that was it was a good joke, but it wasn't well thought of. Wow, just unnecessarily put him <laughs> on blast. Well, so he had to remind you that your Washington curly W's are uh, playing the Red Sox, which he is great, very grateful for because. The Nationals are trash. Dude, they're, they're not good. We still need to go to a game. Yeah. We do. We should, yeah, we I should agree. road trip. Just us. Okay, let's do it. We Brings... could, should we invite the sniffy others or no? Maybe people can audition for it. We can have a car four and then two auditions. And you have to do your best Kermit the Frog impression. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> then a dog bark. Hit it. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> Hold on, is there a dog in here? <laughs> um, oh, last MLB news. Kevin Brown, for those of you who have not heard, because we didn't talk about it last week, we should have, but he's the Orioles announcer, commentator, whatever you want to call it, that was suspended. Did you see this? No, I did not. So when they were playing the Rays, he was reading a graphic and I was talking about how the Orioles had not won a season in Tropicana in the last 16 seasons won like a game or won, uh, a... won a series oh series. so they, they've won like games here and there but haven't won a series and it was just as it was like as benign as i just said it right there and he was suspended for i think negatively talking about the team ridiculous shut up ridiculous shut up yeah like it was one of those things i watched the clip and i finished the clip and i was like what did i miss and i started it over again and i realized that that's what he was suspended for like i was waiting for him to say something how long was he suspended well, so that's the thing. He's back now, I guess. There was a lot of kind of like outlash. Yeah. Well, I think people were just frustrated at the Orioles and because anyway. Well, they so just that's suck. what happened. But he released a statement. Um, you want to read it? Because I yep. can't see it right now. O's fans. This is Kevin Brown, not Christian Mosher. <clears throat> O's fans. I'm a storyteller and I never want to be part of the story. Brown wrote. 
The most compelling story in baseball right now is the story of the league-leading Baltimore Orioles, the best and most exciting young team in the American League. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Unfortunately, recent media reports have mischaracterized my relationship with my adopted hometown Orioles. The fact is that I have a wonderful relationship with the organization and our ownership and front office have fully supported me since 2019 when I first came aboard. I ask that everyone disregard the distracting noise of the past few days. I have worked closely with the O's Senior Vice President Greg Bader for the past four. Can we talk about that name? Greg Bader? Greg Darth Vader. Greg, nah, he's a master at something. For the past four years, and John Angelos and I have a solid dialogue based on mutual respect. We are all good here in Birdland. I'm calling rubbish. I'm calling BS because, dude, that line cracked me up. This the is most, ridiculous. He said, the most compelling story in baseball right now is the story of the league-leading Baltimore Orioles. The most... I'm not allowed to say anything bad about the motherland. The best and the most exciting young team in American League. Ridiculous. He should get suspended for not saying the MLB. He said the American League. Think about that. Well, because it's not the MLB because the Braves are leading. So they're leading the American. No, but he could say the best and most exciting young team in the MLB. Ooh. I guess technically. He should well, get or, fired. Or does he just not believe it? What happened to his authenticity here? This is just garbage. That's I'm not going to lie, man. I lost a lot of respect for the O's organization. And because obviously they coerced him into saying this. Obviously. They forced obviously. him. They forced him. I'm pretty sure. Let's just say there were threats. Maybe to his family. This is like the thriller romantic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the Orioles so much. And then like they make out and then <laughs> like him in the mascot. So turns out to be Betty from high school. <laughs> as the the journalist of integrity that we are, we had to share his statement yes. and then call garbage on it. Golf. Uh, Lucas Glover, back to back wins. Nothing to be said. That's it. I mean, first of all, unbelievable performance he won the first playoff event by unbelievable performance we're talking about unbelievable sweat performance i was about that was, i was <laughs> gonna bring up it's like dude my guy can win multiple multiple pj tournaments and we can't find him a material <laughs> and then espm did him no favors like it was 109 degrees though think about it well then why are you wearing khakis like regular cotton khakis. Well, cotton khakis was the thing. Where's the Lulu Lemon? Like, where's that in the tour? Also, who even wears this on a normal day on tour? That's, that's not 109 point. degrees. And that's then why point. are you like, hold on. Please just tell me he lost the bet. I mean, he's like 400 years he old. Didn't, dude, and he went to Clemson, no so he clearly way. has no style. Between say, Clemson and being no 400. No way, dude. He just dresses like that. He likes them. It's he also a doesn't wear a superstitious thing. I don't know. It's superstitious. I don't know. It's ridiculous is what it is. But it's also ridiculous in a good way that he went from 112th to 4th in the FedEx Cup. He went two standard. tournaments? I saw some crazy tweet where it was like, he won more tournaments this year than like Morikawa, Spieth. I don't know. It's like, yo, a bunch of them combined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, it's like that. That's one of those ridiculous stats where you're like, yeah, just keep adding the people have won. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And it's like one guy had won. Yeah. <laughs> So right now the rankings are John Rahm yep. at numero uno. Uh, get it? Because he's from Spain. See that? Yep. Scotty Scheffler. I was about to say Scheffler. You can. Scotty Scheffler at two. Rory at three. Now Lucas Glover at four. Patrick Cantlay at I five. Him. I wish yeah. he would just be 500th. Yeah. And then uh, Max Homa. Yeah. At six. Homa's a beast. Big fan. Well, I'm just, a, I mean, he obviously is a beast, but I'm a big fan of his person. Did you ever, as a side note, watch the, um, I can't remember who it was, if it was like Bob Does Sports or Foreplay. I think it was Bob Does Sports that he almost broke 60. Or so he like had a putt to shoot 59. And I mean, like, obviously it's not real. Oh, I saw unreal. the putt miss. Yeah, but it was, it was just so, it was just like a fun one watching because yeah. he hadn't ever shot in the 50s. Embarrassing. I get yeah, it. it. Yeah, I know. But like for him, yeah. like, can't we just be happy for him? Whatever. Uh, that was just a fun video. Would recommend it. Obviously, not above watching undrafted amateurs on YouTube. So the biggest thing though that. for golf, and let's I want to report more on this next week, is the Ryder Cup. Because mm -hmm. to be honest, man, as much as I like golf, I cannot get in to the FedEx Cup playoffs. Like I know it's extra money. 
I know it's like extra stakes and you go from like 75 people and the field goes down to like 50, 50, I don't know, somewhere like that. I I mean, they cut the field down every term and it's like top 40, right? Or something. And and I get it. Like, that's fun. But well, so then going there, do you think Lucas Glover is going to make the team? Or the Ryder Cup? Yeah, they're talking about him making the team. Um, Wyndham Clark, because he won the U.S. Open. And then Brian Harmon, because he won the Open. Can you imagine, like, we're replacing Jordan Spieth, we're replacing Justin Thomas, and we're throwing... Can I be any more clear how I feel about this? What was no. the one SpongeBob episode where it was like, uh, every time it was like someone talked, there's a... <laughs> That's the way it feels, like, Lucas Glover. And then Brian Harmon. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Let's no. well, I'll report more on next week. But that's the thing. I'm I, I love the Ryder Cup. I love that tournament. I just don't care about the FedEx Cup. Like, what does it matter? Like, in my opinion, there's four majors. Yes. Right? And to win I, a golf tournament. On. I don't think that's your opinion. I think there just are four majors. Well, no, my I guess in terms of like importance, there's four majors. And obviously, anytime you want a PJ golf tournament, phenomenal. Yes. But I just can't get behind these any more than I do a normal. PGA golf tournament and definitely not like a major. Fair. Like I don't care who wins the FedEx Cup playoffs, but I care who wins the open. I, as a new golf fan, I also agree. Yeah. My opinion carries no weight, but I agree with you. Should we toss it to Iceman? Yeah. What's up everybody. It What's is up, that Iceman? time of year. College football is almost back. The Gamecocks have been snubbed out of the AP poll, Our and you can pipe that into my veins as more Cox. motivation for Spencer Rattler and Shane Beamer. But we're going to go way up north to the Great Lakes area today for this week's Unsung Hero. The Eastern Michigan Eagles uh, have head coach Chris Creighton, and Chris has just seen something he's never seen in his entire coaching career. You know, it's become kind of commonplace that during training camp and otherwise, there's some walk-on kid that gets a scholarship. It's awesome. Every time the whole team goes nuts, they huddle up, jumping up and down, they're getting creative with how these announcements come out. But this year, Creighton was faced with something that he didn't see coming. It wasn't even in his coaching staff's control. Senior offensive lineman Brian Dooley has been a starter and leader on this team for Eastern Michigan for the last couple years. And his best friend, Zach Conti, a walk-on, has been somebody that has just grinded every single day in the college football realm. On top of being a student athlete, to pay his tuition, the kid does demolition jobs, landscaping, and has even sold plasma in order to get by. But Dedication. this year, it was going to become too much, and Zach was going to have to quit playing football, the sport he loves. Step in best friend Brian Dooley, who goes to head coach Chris Creighton and says, Hey, coach, I want to give Zach my scholarship for his senior year. Coach caught off guard goes, I guess we can do that. And sure enough, there's a great video. The team meeting's called, coach talks, and then Brian gets called up front, and he gets to award his best friend, Zach Conti, a scholarship for his senior year. It doesn't get much better than that. True friendship, college football, and all the feels. Here's to you, Brian Dooley. You're this Ooh. week's unsung hero. Do I see watering? Tearing up? watering. Dude, that was all, that's, that's such a good story. I can't wait for the movie. I know. Ooh, how I do we forget about this? Blind side. Blind side. First of all, we'll get that. But first of all, second of all, fourth of all, fifth of all, what I'm thinking is to piggyback off Iceman's story. I watched the video and what a great moment. Like you have to be a proud parent too when he comes to his parents like, hey, I've been on scholarship the last few years, right? Like right. we're only going to have but so much college debt. One of our best friends has never had one and he's – Got to quit football because he can't afford it. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, I want to give my scholarship. Like, that's, just, that's, yeah. Beautiful. I mean, I feel like at that point, it's like, I've, we've done everything we can do as a parent. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. Well done. That's awesome. That is awesome. I had a friend who, speaking of the plasma, who in college would sell plasma so we could buy a guitar. <laughs> Did he buy it? Yeah. Nice. Good he just friend. like kept you going for like the max he can. For like 40 bucks a pop or something. It's pretty good. Pretty good money. But blindside. But, yeah. Should we go there now? Dude, I I haven't done intense research on it, but I've done enough research to be like, mm. what's going on? Like something seems off here on both sides. Like with uh the family and Michael yes. Orr. 
Like, Oher. Oher. Yeah. So he's just now finding out about this conservatorship, whatever you call it. Yeah. Which is interesting to me. Like, there must, first of all, I, I really highly doubt that this family, at such a young age, like for Michael, like what they adopted when he was what? Like, I think it was 12. Was it? I thought it was like high school. Oh, was it? I thought it was like before high school. It might be. Maybe not. The story I have in my mind is like they saw a 17 year old found D1. <laughs> all right, we have to look this one up though. So here's, I have to look because all up. I read today was the ESPN story on it. Okay. And what it was saying was, uh, I guess that he found out he wasn't officially adopted and it was just like a, I guess, conservatorship. Right. It. Uh, Interesting that apparently he hasn't gotten any money from the the movie at all, and all both of the other kids get paychecks and royalty royalties from it. That's what they said, but then also the parents responded like, "We split everything equally, Between and we the didn't other get four. much." So apparently, they bless you. That's nasty. Uh, so apparently, you're they, right. I said eighteen. I was wrong. Yeah, so he's older, uh, and then I think they got like two hundred twenty-five thousand. I want to say each for the movie, and then we're supposed to get, or I think we're gonna get Reb share in the movie of like I guess gross profit. So not same thing. Uh, yeah, but gross profit's such a BS number. But keep going. So they said they didn't get anything from that, and I think yeah. he was saying that they did get something. So yeah, they did. That's who what knows? I'm saying. Who knows, man? But it is just interesting. We were also ironically talking about the movie this weekend. And one of my buddies was like, I hate the way that movie is. Like, I like the story, but I just like, don't wait the, like the way they painted the family out to be of just like, oh, let's come in and save you. And then look at our phones today. Get a little notification. Who knows? Man? Who knows? Who knows about these stories? But, but keep you posted on it. <laughs> Developing updates. Should we do it? Yeah, because I'm tired of this crap. I'm going to beat you this time. Did it's Becca over. write the Florida man? She did. Oh, now you're going to trick me. It's not even going to be you that tricks me. Yeah, she did. All right, here we go. Let me get on my Microsoft account. All right, story number one. A Florida man was arrested in October when police said he attacked a woman with a machete wearing nothing but a cowboy hat. The arrest report from Miami-Dade Police, originally reported by WPLG, said Roberto Hercules, 45, attacked the woman while she was riding a bicycle. Police said he asked her for a crack pipe, but when she said she didn't have one, he chased her with a machete, the original report said. Hercules was charged with attempted murder, attempted armed robbery, and aggravated battery with a weapon. Story number two. Mm. A Florida man was arrested last Friday in Tallahassee, Florida, after the suspect was observed playing basketball completely nude at a public court, causing disruption and alarm among onlookers. The arrest report from Tallahassee police said Dan Keller, age 45, was slurring his words and reminiscing on the old days. Responding officers promptly detained the individual without any resistance. He is now facing charges of public indecency and disorderly conduct. The situation was resolved without further incident, and the court has been reopened for public use. <laughs> reopened for public use. Oh, way better than yours. Shout out, Becca. Um, oh. Is it Tallahassee? Is it Miami? I think I'm going to go story... Hmm. I think oh. story two is true. Wrong! Yes! You didn't even trick me. Yes! Becky tricked me. Is it story one? I lied. She didn't do it either. Yes! That was you? Yeah. Wow. I wanted you to think I didn't write it. <laughs> you didn't write it. <laughs> I did write it. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. That was that was a really tricky one. Yes! Yeah, the naked with the machete was the true one. I said playing basketball completely nude. <laughs> <laughs> So what was his name? Like something Hercules? Yeah. 
So I, I almost, when I was writing the second story, uh -huh. I almost did like like Tom Achilles, like Achilles. So you know, it's, like, if you had done that though, I would have gone story number I one. His name just sounded fake to me. But I almost went like like um, like uh, like Tom Zeus, like another Greek god, yeah. you know, last name. But I didn't. But you didn't. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. No, Florida is just a weird place. I was like, is it really chasing someone? <laughs> You did it. <laughs> How does it feel to have a, a Honestly, victory? Honestly, it feels so good. I was hoping I so bad. Oh, oh, I thought I had you in the last couple. Now now I'm the loser. Narrowing the gap. Narrowing the gap. Because at first we were just kind of gone on a parallel path. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Man. Well done. Well done. You deserve that. Thank you. I'm crying inside in case anyone's wondering. Feel free to send me chocolates. I'm going to send you more than that. Or... Instead of chocolates, should we do a Gliz piece? Because on the draft today, the draft is the best times to slam a Gliz piece. <laughs> we should have done the best names for a hot dog. <laughs> That's what we should have done. So this is like situations, yep. painting scenarios. We'll get yep. a little bit specific, specific. So not just say like a barbecue, but like paint a little bit more of a scene around it. I like scenes. A couple fun facts about Gliz pieces. One... Oh, you're doing fun facts. Fun facts going in. I saw an article that said eating a hot dog can take 36 minutes off your <laughs> life. That. And let me tell you what. I will lose 36 minutes gladly <laughs> to have the enjoyment of a gliz piece, a pork missile at some of these places we're about to mention. Oh, gosh. Uh, I can't wait to have a freaking beef torpedo. I just beef that oh, one up, too. That's a that good one, off the yeah, dome, did. everyone. That was he, good, right? Hold on. Christian just gets a Florida man done, then all of a sudden... Ooh. With that W, his brain is unlocked I'm start to new carrying levels. carrying this podcast. You're like, a, you're like a Tesla that has all the hardware in there. You just need a little software upgrade. You just need to unlock it. I might take my clothes off. And play basketball. Yeah. With a machete. Like my guy, Achilles. Zeus. <laughs> but all other right, one, do you ever so watch the league? Top... We'll do four each. No, three. Four is, four we can do four. We can do four. I but think, I get no, one more. I four or five's overkill. I think three's good. Are we talking like pocket dogs, like Rafi in the league? Did you ever watch that where he walks around uh, with pocket dogs? Uh, that could be but one. But it's got to be a specific place. Like you can't just have it in your pocket. That's not a place. Right? Yeah, I know that you carry that around. That's more of a state of mind. <laughs> go on, go on, go on. It is more of a state of mind. Draft. You get the first pick. Oh, easy. You, you, we can do four. We can this do four. This is easy. Or three. Let's do four. Let's do three. Why, why four? Why is it been on four? I don't know. I want it more. But why? Because I just want to keep thinking about this. It's a happy thought. No, 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 go on, go on. Just start. Number one, way. this is the easiest one for me. Yeah. I mean, by far, I think about this probably once a week, and that is when you're playing golf and you mm. play nine holes, okay? And it's like Friday at like, you know, 3.30 p.m. You yep. had lunch at 12. Mm. You can't eat too much before dinner, and you stop and get two Miller Lights and a pork missile at the turn. Yeah. And you have nine more holes to go. I mean, that's wow. I mean, an easy, a, wow. Th that and the one I'm about to say are a clear one-two punch. Yeah. You, you know what I'm about Baseball to go with? Baseball game. It? Baseball game. Yeah. Done. It's like, imagine sitting out there. We, we make our trip yeah. to watch the Curly W's play. Yeah. We're sitting outside. We get a nice gliz piece from Nathan's famous hot dogs, yeah. probably. And they're famous. Or we're at Truist Park watching the Braves hit dinger after dinger. Okay. With a nice little hot dog. Personally, I'm a ketchup guy. I'm not a big mustard guy in general. I wish I liked it on a hot dog, but I'm not because I don't like that it in general. Sense. You probably just like ketchup and then like that's it. Yeah, I'm yeah, just a ketchup guy. Yeah, I know. I'm a sick freak. Sick freak. So that's mine. I love that. So number two for me. Let's throw it back. Let's throw mm -hmm. it back to when you're 16. Let's go, mm. let's go a high school you. And you're a man and you want to learn how to grill. And your dad goes, hey, like, let's start off, because what's one of the easiest things to grill? Hot dog. Hot dog, right? Because you can still burn them to a crisp, and they're still fine. Just char So it. your dad goes, here's how to cook a hot dog. And the first couple you make might be too burnt, right? Mm -hmm. You might burn the piss out of them. Yep. But the next couple you make are edible. Mm -hmm. They're not great. But they're edible. And you have your first hot dog that you grilled. With your own hands? With your own it's hands. It's like you grew the hot dog yourself. Oh. You, you finally understand what hard work tastes like. And it's bonus points if it's the first time you grilled. Mm. 
Wow. That's, that's I remember nice. doing that in high school when I was like 15 or 16, the first time I grilled. Yeah. And I would just invite my, my buddies over and we'd do like a small fire, be like four or five of us. And, and I would always grow hot dogs. My friends would love it, but yep. like they didn't realize, like know how to grill yet. So, and I was like, it's really the easiest thing, but they think I'm a good cook, but it's like, obviously like, oh, so you were seven feet tall, at least at that point. Oh, and I would like always throw the buns on the grill oh. just so it's like a little extra. It's Gourmet. I know, Gourmet. I know. All right, go ahead. Uh that's a good one. I'm gonna say now that there's only three, gotta think more about it. This one, shout out Iceman. Oh you have you guys just eaten Gliz piece together. You have just yeah, yeah, yeah. We have just adventured together <laughs> to <laughs> Costco. Oh so we're we're perusing Costco. It's you're a little exhausted. Then you start to brave Ooh. the line, the checkout line. Yeah. You've braved the checkout line at Costco. And as you're swiping the last item, you look up and in a massive billboard like wow. sign, you see hot dog combo, one dollar and fifty cents. And you say, Wow. I'm exhausted. I'm ready to just get out of here. But I'm gonna go slam this yeah. way. And then and then you get it. And it lives up to everything you ever dreamed oh, I of. I love that. And it only costs a dollar and fifty cents. And you're like, does inflation even exist? Yeah. Not at hot. Not at hot. Not at hot dog not Costco. At, 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 at hot dog. At hot, hot dog. dog. Not, not at hot dog. dog. So this one for me is kind of like your number one, but it's different. So I'm going to include it because it's a different quote unquote place and time. So for me, is it Little League? <laughs> especially in Little League, and especially. Actually, dude, now that I think about it, because I played baseball obviously growing up and into college and like little league, we did it. Yep. Middle school, we did it. High school, we did it. And college, we did it. Even in like home college games, we like, they always made too much hamburgers, and hot dogs, and they just like gave us a That's kind of nice. Hamburgers and hot dogs after every home game. And high school was like similar. We did a lot of that too. And so having like playing a game, mm -hmm. baseball game. Yep. Going three for four. Right, not for, I, you, you can't really go four for four because this is not the example to go four. Sometimes four. three for five. Let's go three for five. Let's go three for five. Right, you guys won ten six. Mm. You had a good game. You had three RBIs, yep. three runs scored. Mm -hmm. You let off for the team. Probably a ground rule double in this game. Ground too. rule double. Well, not for me. It was probably double <laughs> down the opposite line. <laughs> <laughs> but Slipped it back. <laughs> you beat a team in the conference. You go three for five, and the concession stand lady goes. We got extra hot dogs. Would you like some? Would you like one? And I say, absolutely. So having that hot dog after you play a baseball game, or even like after you play some type of athletic event and someone gives you a free concession hot dog. So oh. one, that's amazing. <laughs> Two though, same kind of scenario, a little bit different. It's not after a game. One of the best times growing up, this isn't mine. This is oh, just okay. me adding on to it. Yeah. It'll be too similar. Uh, is when you're with your sports team, let's say you're playing travel ball. Yeah. You've got your double header in the weekend and you've got like a couple hours in between the games uh -huh. and it's just you and the boys. Y'all are chilling out probably outside left field on, um, on the hill. There's a fence down. You're probably table topping each other off it. Yeah. yeah. And you're just killing time and you go to the concession stand and you grab one there. You have to pay for it. So it's not quite you, as good. Right. But and I mean, get like a candy you don't tin. have that same experience in life of when you, you have no, you can't go anywhere. You're just waiting around. You have nothing to do, but talk about middle school crushes. Yeah. Hang out. Put on your fight. Fight necklace. each other a little bit, yeah, yeah, but not too much because you're about to play a game. Right. Get a little bit jittery because maybe you're starting the next game, Ooh. you know, but you're like trying not to get into that too much. Maybe that's just me. So I don't that's know. why you need the pork missile. So you need one. Calm you down. I mean, you know, those are good times. Ooh. Those are good times. But mine, my personal one. Since it's the last pick, it is the 4th of July. Maybe you watched Joey Chestnut slam a few, a lot of minutes taking off his life. Oof. You're sitting outside. You can smell the grill going off. Maybe you're in the swimming pool. You're in the swimming pool at the oh, beach oh, right now. Wet dog. <laughs> you own a float. You're, Maybe a hot dog oh, float. He is no, 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 no. number three is you've, a wet dog. You just climbed out of the pool. You're dripping wet. You grab a dog. And you just slam it on the 4th of July and you say, this is what America was made for. Can you call that a submarine missile? The soggy a dog. <laughs> a submarine missile. Uh, the 4th of July, though, that is a very distinct time to really inhale. 
uh, pork missile. And maybe you're like, you know what? Normally I would only do two. Yeah. But treat yourself. I'm going a third one because calories don't count today. Three dogs, man. Are you having them all at the same time or no, over no, 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 span? No. Two at the same time and then and you then go back for a one later. Third. So yeah. like two at like 1 p.m. and then one at like 2.30. Something like Probably that. Probably 2.23. Okay. Hypothetically. Yeah, yeah. Give or take a little bit. But yeah. Uh, Big pork missile I'm go podcast. Get, I'm going to go get a freaking gliz piece right now. Let's go. Let's find a nice gas station. Coming to a gas station near you. That was episode 33. If you're still around. Next week, let's get into a little fantasy football. I so, would freaking love if that. If you want us to help you win your league, unless you're in a league with us and we're not going to help you, check it out. Bang. Peace. Peace. Peace.